Now, let us see the application of such thermoresponsive polymers in uh, chromatographic systems for separation of very active or sensitive molecules, sensitive systems. Now, this PIPAM poly N isopropyl acrylamide modified glass beads, glass beads are modified, glass bead surfaces are modified with this uh, NIPAM polymer, we can say NIPAM polymer, PIPAM polymer can be also called NIPAM polymer. NIPAM N isopropyl acryl amide uh, NIPAM polymer. So, this NIPAM polymer can modify this glass beads and which can be used as column packing matrices for aqueous gel permeation chromatography without involving any organic solvent GPC. You know GPC system is used for separation as well as separation and purification as well as for evaluation of molecular weight and molecular weight distribution of polymers. Now, this system functions by, by coil to globule transition of PIPM below and above their lower critical solution temperature LCST. The pore size increases with polymer chains in globule config configuration. You think of a bead porous bead over which these polymers are coated, what happens if it assumes the globular configuration pores are opened. So, that way it says the pore size increases, pores get opened. So, the pore size increases that way, pore size increases with polymer chains in globule configuration at elevated temperature due to shrinkage of the polymers. Okay. Hydrophobic nature transition to hydrophobic nature and solute permeation, permeation is encouraged through the por porous glass and which gradually increases due to such change in um, phase. Such PIPA modified stationary phase is able to separate solutes without the use of organic solvents. So, if the organic solvents could be avoided, then separation of bioactive molecules becomes very easy because organic solvents denatures or destroys the bioactive molecules, where these organic solvents are not recommended. Achha. This system has the following advantages. What are the advantages? Number one is high performance separation and purification in aqueous phase. Two, retention of structure and function of bioactive compounds, neither the structure or the function of the bioactive molecules are altered. Then they can retain the structure and function of cell membrane proteins, cell membrane proteins, cell membranes of the proteins, uh, cell membranes uh, are made of protein molecules, protein molecules. So, their structures and functions are um, kept altered or retained. The retention of cellular function, elimination of environmental problems arising out of organic solvents commonly used as mobile phase. So, use of such <coughs> NIPAM polymers as modifying agent can provide such advantages in chromatographic separation systems. Polyethylene glycol modified proteins have de uh, decreases the immunoreactivity or immunogenicity uh, and uh, this increases stability in vivo stability of the system. Use in organic synthesis under organic solvents, um, actually these are little, uh, um, it needs little elaboration, you may not be interested. So, you can skip these portions, this may not be suitable for you, those who are interested for biological uh, applications, uh, biological um, separations and other things, they can go in detail. Similarly, temperature responsive PIPM biomolecule conjugates can control solubility, insolubility changes of biomolecules by change of temperature. Okay. Following are the characteristics of such systems. 
they control the stability through structure controlling the through alteration of structure and their functions. They control the solubility of the system become soluble or insoluble through copolymerization of the polymer, regulation of attachment and detachments to cells and tissues that is also done, on off switching of bioactivity can be developed, barrier function against immune system can be developed, regulation of targeting to specific sites for drug delivery that is also that is also possible. Now, a living body actively maintains its health and a normal metabolic balance under conditions called hemostasis. Maintaining normal healthy uh, physiological functions is known as hemostasis. Deviations from such normal hemostasis is called disease that occurs due to disease. Okay. The medical treatments are used to normalize imbalances in homeostasis caused by disease. Now, that is done by drug incorporation and drug concentration must be maintained in a certain therapeutic range as I mentioned for the drug to act properly. Drugs become toxic above the upper level of the range and becomes ineffective under the lower level. That means, the appropriate dose should be given, it should reach the target site, it should not affect the other parts of the body etcetera, that is the requirement. A non novel drug delivery system can deliver drugs effectively to the targeting site cause called targeted or site specific delivery and release drugs when they are required. That means, temporal control means how much time minimum time is required to release the drug. <coughs> control of that time is known as temporal control and then up it starts the drug release for certain quantity of drug is released which is required the therapeutic dose is released after that it should be stopped pulsatile delivery. That means, there can be for certain period of time drugs should continue to release, then after that period it should stop the release. Again there may be a pause for say few uh, minutes or few seconds and again it should uh, start the release of the drug, continue for certain period then stop. So, this way drug release for a certain period stop. So, it can show like this say drug release then stop again starts release uh, this way it can show this kind of release and stopping like this. This is called pulsatile profile, pulsatile profile, pulsatile, pulsatile release profile of drugs. Okay. This minimizes side effects. That means, once this drug is released, that drug uh, starts fighting with the disease only consumed by the uh, affected tissues, not by others. Uh, if, it, uh, if it needs further amount quantity of drugs, then uh, that is released once in the second, in the second uh, cycle of the release profile, this way by in terms of uh, through pulsatile uh, uh, delivery we can go for controlled drug release. Temporal control of drug release has been attempted using polymers responsive to external stimuli such as temperature, electric field, magnetic field and pH. Here is a model, here is a model. Suppose this is the drug delivery device. Say consider this is a spherical device having pores, all right. Inside the pores, the drug is kept loaded. So, these dots are suppose the dots are drug molecules, drug particles inside and outside surface is coated with such uh, polymer which can act like molecular valve. So, what happens if the 
system, if this entire system receives a signal, disease signal. Hmm. Now, that disease signal means that signal due to change in temperature, change in temperature. If there is certain disease, body temperature will change. That change in temperature gives a signal as a sensing signal. Okay. Once that sensing signal, signal is received by this device, that will switch on the device means that will direct these molecules to open the valve means it should be hydrophilic. That means, the, if the temperature decreases, if the temperature decreases, the molecules uh, can swell and open the valve. Here you see in case of on stage, on stage, switch on stage, the drug molecule, the valves are opened, valves are opened and drug molecules are getting out, going out of the device. Now, after these drug molecules, say insulin suppose, uh, insulin that consumes the glucose, extra glucose in the blood and again the temperature will change in the opposite direction and a signal, a signal will go to the system, then it will say now you should uh, close the valve, system should get off. Okay. So, through, so, that is the, if that means from this disease, if some signal is uh, received as normal, the situation homeostasis has become normal, okay. then that will give a feedback through auto, auto feedback system, it will ask the device to close the valve, that means switch off the device. So, it will come back here. So, this way pulsatile release of drug can be release and uh, release and uh, your uh, stopping release of drug can be done. This is known as intelligent drug delivery system. Uh, intelligent drug delivery system and actually this is there is some wrong controlling you should be controlling feedback systems to monitor and control drug delivery. There are some examples of polymers in isopropyl acrylamide copolymer gels, copolymer gels using certain percentage of butyl methacrylate that is not mentioned over here. So, in this case here it is men mentioned 5 weight percent uh, butyl methacrylate, metha butyl methacrylate. So, the LCST lower critical solution temperature of this particular polymer with a copolymer uh, co-monomer is LCST is 32 degree Celsius above this temperature it becomes hydrophobic, below this temperature it becomes hydrophilic. Now, this LCST temperature can be regulated by or changed by altering the composition of this polymer and the co-monomer concentration, co-monomer nature, co-monomer um, uh, chemical type. So, you see in another case you find this LCST is minus 25 uh, around 25 degree that demonstrate remarkable soiling, desoiling changes in response to temperature. So, we have flexibility, it is not that it is rigid to only one temperature, depending on the temperature signal or temperature that occurs or arises as a result of one disease. Say, uh, if there is some stomach disorder, we find sometimes there is fever. If there is some injury, physical injury, operation, there is some increase in body temperature. Okay. Why? You know, so there is some, uh, if the doctor knows that for so and so disease, for so and so reason, the body temperature changes to that level. So, that is why if there is some your temperature history of the patient, known temperature history of the patient and if the doctors can co correlate the change of body temperature with the, with the specific cause of a disease, specific disease, then he can diagnose a suitable drug and there that encapsulation of the drug can be, uh, can be decided or judged by people like you, those who know this polymer, okay, who are making this drug delivery devices, all right. And these are few applications, I will show you in uh, other chapter. Uh, cell culture system. 
uh, as I was mentioning you. Normal polystyrene dyes is used for culture of cells or tissues. Today, tissue engineering is a well known keyword tissue engineering. What is tissue engineering? Now, cosmetic surgery, you know, cosmetic surgery that cosmetic surgery is done by grafting process. How that grafting is done? The tissue is collected from some other part of the patient and it is grafted onto the other affected site. That is a kind of treatment, cosmetic treatment, cosmetic surgery. But today that is a painful affairs. Today now that uh, um, uh, tissue which instead of uh, taking from other part of the body, if that could be developed artificially in an artificial way by through tissue culture system using uh, embryonic uh, what is that called uh, stem cells technology through stem cell uh, technology. I am not conversant in that field, but stem cell technology but uh, through using embryonic cells. So, these cells are used for tissue culture and for that tissue culture or tissue engineering some scaffold is needed, needed skeleton is needed you know for making an idol or a skeleton is made hmm, for giving a support using some woody uh, you know, uh, stems as well as some straw and other things over which then hydroplasted clay and other things and then, then idol is made. So, some, some skeleton is required. Now, that skeleton is called scaffold, the scaffold can be made of this polymers all right. This way tissue engineering is done. In other cases say myocardial tissue, myocardial say if there is some problem in the myocardial tissue on the heart, heart muscle suppose heart muscle, the property of heart muscle it should be beating you see it should be beating like this contraction expansion contraction expansion function should be there in the muscle. Now that muscle is artificially made using the stem cells how it is done. Now you, there is skeleton uh, is little the use of skeleton is little difficult. Now this technique this technique has been followed for making cell seats like a ply this one uh, seat of cell tissues engineered tissues this one is engineered kept aside another tissue seat is engineered kept over it another tissue is engineered kept over it. So, thin sheets of tissues when they are assembled one over the other a thick muscle is created and it has been found that these tissues which have been culture your uh, artificially developed they have beating characteristic they, are, they have some electrical communicating power electrical uh, power transmission characteristics as well as as well as um, um, what is that called uh, neovascularization means vascular tubes blood vessels are also accommodated over there those are create those could, can be created over there so they have shown some success in such artificial tissue engineering using this system what is this in order to understand that thing just you consider this polystyrene tissue culture surface, you know polystyrene, uh, polystyrene tissue culture this is made of polystyrene, is made of polystyrene. Now, over that polystyrene some nutrient broth or something like that some your, uh, your uh, medium media is given over which cells are inoculated, some strains are given or say your uh, cells are inoculated over there and kept in the incubator. That means, temperature, humidity, carbon dioxide, oxygen, nutrients, everything all these are means food and environment all are provided to those cells. Then they starts growing proliferation. 
cell growths are there, tissue growths are there. And after a certain period of that culture, what we find that a sheet of tissue is formed over the disc or the disc surface. Then after it is formed, what we need? We have to harvest it, we have to take out that sheet either by some forceps or by some other technique. Now, those tissue gets adhered to onto the surface through those cell membrane proteins. Those cell membrane proteins actually uh, make themselves the tissues bound with the culture surface. So, that has to be ruptured or broken. For that, some enzymatic treatment is given that is known as trypsin or other enzymes. So, when those enzymes are given, that enzymes actually break those membrane proteins and the cells can be taken out of the surface and can be lifted. Now, during that process what happens? It damages the cell, it damages the confluency of the cell and majority of the cell membrane proteins are damaged, all these, these problems are there. So, these things are discussed over here little bit, you will get the concept if you read it. Yeah, now, here you see, uh, okay, let me show you uh, this, uh, um, explain this uh, diagram here. <coughs> Suppose, this is a tissue culture surface, okay, tissue culture surface, then some tissue uh, cells are grown, these are the cells, these are the cells uh, which are remaining side by side. Now, such type of arrangement is called confluency, cell confluency. So, that you can say this is a confluent cell sheet, alright. Now, once this confluent cell sheet is made, formed, then it should be detached from the surface, ok. So, this way, this way it is uh, uh, cells are, cell sheets are detached. Now, tissue culture polystyrene disc is this a cell is formed and collagen coated cell culture insert is there, oh, that is little different. So, this way we try to understand this portion, we want to get this lift out, lift out this uh, tissue sheet. Uh, now, here you see, here you see this is a polystyrene disc over which cells are grown, all right. Then, in order to take out these cells or cell seeds, some enzymatic treatment in the left side, this enzymatic treatment is done, what happens? The cells are separated and damaging the cells also. On the contrary, if the tissue culture this is coated with that nipam polymer, nipam polymer, what happens? That nipam polymer covers the surface over which these tissues are grown. Then, without any enzymatic treatment, by simply changing the temperature, changing the temperature of the culture disc, the cells can be lifted from the from the surface of the disc. Where you just compare these two, where the cells are ruptured or these uh, proteins are broken, all these things uh, due to enzymatic treatment. Uh, actually, some extracellular matrix ECM. These are also damaged, all these things are damaged, but here it is not, it is maintained. This is the advantage of the tissue culture. Here you see, patterned, patterned cell culture, that is done in microelectronics. in integrated circuits, some circuit patterns are developed, huh? the technique is there, technology is there today people are making. In tissue culture also, this has been made possible by virtue of uh, these uh, polymers, characteristics of these polymers. Here you see, these are these yellow color cells or hepato hepatocyte cells and this brown color cells 
are endothelial cells. Now, over a surface, over a surface, we want to have a pattern like this hepatocyte cells uh, in a definite pattern and then endothelial cells in another pattern, then that is possible if the surface is modified with this Nipam polymer. Uh, now, this is actually uh, this this uh, this is actually uh, this is your blue portion is P I P M domain and this this portion is actually a copolymer of P I P M and butyl methacrylate grafted uh, polymer domain. And in this case the L C S T is 27 degree Celsius in this case L C S T is 37 degree Celsius this case it is 20 degree Celsius. So, there are three different cases this one, this one and this one. So, these three different LCST uh, are used for three different cases. So, ultimately what happens we can get this patterned growth of tissue hepatocytes and endothelial cells and that entire pattern sheet can be lifted by virtue of this LCST property of this polymer. Now, here is an example a gauge for dressing of wound, dressing of wound. So, if there is your after surgery or due to some injury on these things, so it needs dressing of the tissue surface in order to prevent from external bacterial attack as well as giving a support for for normal growth of the tissue for healing, is not it? For that purpose, it is actually uh, covered with some bandage or gauze. Now, now if it needs dressing for two uh, after some intermittent period like that, intermediate period say that is uh, two days or three days or five days like that, what happens? So, some tissue in growth occurs into the gauze bandage is not it? It is healing during the time of healing some tissue in growth can be there into the bandage also. So, when that old bandage is removed, so that tissue uh, in uh, ingrown tissue will be ruptured that will be a severe pain to the patient is not it? So, that is a problem. Now, instead of that if that gauze is coated with such polymer mm, by simple uh, taking hot water of that particular temperature, uh, it will separate out instead of adhering. So, a new type of gauze coated with PIPM allows easy removal from a wound even after 7 days by pouring a cold saline solution onto the modified gauze implying weaker interaction between PIPM and tissues whereas, normal gauze causes damage to the wound sites. So, this is a very good application say for dermal wound healing, uh, say for severely born patients, understand the situation. There such type of modified uh, gauze can help treatment of born patients giving minimum injury, uh, minimum pain to the patients and that injury again the second time or third time dressing injury again that is affecting the healing process also. So, if that healing process can be kept unaffected then uh, healing could be quicker is not it. So, that is done by such modification this is another application. Again, you see cells, 
cell recovery or harvesting by low temperature treatment, proliferate well on tissue culture days and retain high functionality judged by the secretion of albumin from hepatocytes compared with cells recovered by conventional trypsin treatment. So, it shows some uh, recovery profile with temperature rat hepatocyte cells and endothelial cells. We skip all these things. Intelligent surface attachment of stimuli responsive polymers onto surfaces with regulated morphology such as polymer films, metals, glasses produces highly functional interfaces. Such surfaces respond to external stimuli to alter the surface properties. And dynamic morphologies due to changes in conformation and properties of polymer modifiers on the surface. So, so the job is to prepare an intelligent surface. Now, if I ask you, so how to make it? If I give you some monomer isopropyl acrylamide, how would you modify the surface with that monomer? How do you do? Who can say? That is monomer. What will be the role of coupling agent there? The coupling agent will couple the monomer onto the surface, then what will happen? Rajesh? You are discussing something with your friend. Stand up, please. Explain. I asked you to modify a polystyrene surface by this isopropyl acrylamide monomer. I shall give you, if I give you a polystyrene this and this monomer, you tell me the method how it can be modified, not the polymer, I have given you the monomer only, how to do? You have come from BIT? Yes, sir. You have read polymer also there? Yes, sir. Then you should tell how that polymer can be developed on this thing. 
isopropyl acrylamide is the monomer. Can your friend help you? No, sir. Why? Why? You tell me how this polymethyl methacrylate is made from methyl methacrylate? So, if you just take the monomer and give BPO and you will get the polymer. So, if it is done in presence of air will it form? Hmm? Repeat. In presence of air, polymer will be formed. No. Why? Why you do not know? Why? You have done the experiment in the lab, you have read in book, you have attended so many lectures, why not? Did you ask anybody? Sit down. You have to remove oxygen from the polymerization chamber, otherwise oxygen inhibits the polymerization. So, nitrogen purging is required to evacuate the oxygen from the medium. In absence of oxygen, only such polymerization can occur from methyl methacrylate in presence of BPO benzoyl peroxide or any other initiator azobis isobutyl nitrile. Here also this monomer isopropyl acrylamide can be polymerized on this polystyrene base using some monomer or uh, using some uh, initiator, but that will not do in this particular case because we have to have a grafting of such polymer onto polystyrene base. For that, you may need some electron beam or some other techniques so that some radical or some active surface is created on the polystyrene disc surface, and then in presence of that moisture, uh, sorry, in if you uh, do this process in presence of that monomer, that monomer will start polymerization simultaneously. So, that polymer will get attached onto the polystyrene surface and you will get a modification of the surface. There is a kind of or modification of or a type of plasma polymerization in order to modify the polystyrene disc, these are these things. Well, Such surfaces respond to external stimuli to alter the surface properties and dynamic morphologies due to change in conformation and property and pr properties of polymer modifiers on the surface. Second 
same concept here. Okay. We try to uh, look at this model here. So, you can have a materials with its surface that materials may be polymer or metal or ceramic. If you have some active site on the surface, then you can attach this stimuli responsive polymer onto the surface and these polymers respond to external stimuli or stimulus say temperature or pH like that and that help in separation and purification. I give you one another example say in drug delivery system this polyvinyl alcohol polyvinyl alcohol uh, can be used for making pH responsive drug delivery. Now, in stomach, in stomach do you know the pH? Acidic means how acidic, how much acidic? Huh? Less than 5, it goes to less than 5, highly acidic. So, when we swallow something, it passes through that highly acidic region, acidic zone okay, for digestion or hydrolysis or breakdown of the breakdown of the food materials. Then slowly it passes through the colon and the large intestine. Okay. There the pH is higher. Now, sometimes we need some drug to be released in the stomach, sometimes we need drugs to be released in the large intestine at different places where the pH is the pH environments are different. So, if your drug is or your drug delivery system is responsive to such pH, say at low pH the encapsulated device will not show any swelling or something like that. So, drug will remain inside the device. When it passes that stomach or high pH, low pH region and enters the high pH region, there it will open because of swelling, because that we only swell in alkaline pH, not in acidic pH. The reverse thing can also be done, swelling in acidic pH and deswelling in alkaline pH. So, that can be done by modifying this polyphenol alcohol, by attaching some carboxyl group or without carboxyl group. So, these are the concepts, people are working on this thing and making some devices. You know, we are swallowing so many different capsules or uh, drugs, coated capsules, etcetera, polymer coated capsules, sugar coated capsules or drugs, pills. Hmm? How they are making? Who are helping them? People like you are helping. So, if you have some knowledge, uh, you can uh, tell something new. So, where you see? this uh, due to change in temperature, it can show solen to disolen configuration. Now, if there are substances like proteins, cells, biomolecules represented by this, uh, that can be separated or uh, that can be purified, that can be help, uh, that can help in uh, filtration etcetera. So, by change in surface structures, by change in surface properties, by changes in interaction mechanism for application in separation and purification. We go through this diagram and see the message, the message which can be obtainable from such diagram, from such a presentation.
you have to know the soiling desoiling kinetics. Soiling desoiling kinetics as well as soiling volume desoiling volume. You have the specific volume in solent and desoiling condition. Then we know how much is the volume of the uh, matrix in which the drug is kept loaded or encapsulated. You know the volume of the drug and if you know uh, the uh, ratio of the solent to desolent volume, then you can get the size of the pores created or pores generated due to uh, swelling etcetera. And if you know the time of release, so this way the entire uh, your uh, release profile can be programmed that way. You know, there are so many different variables. So, act on the variables, work on the variables, this way you can make a program, so that you can give you well defined drug release, well defined drug release. So, that is called targeted as well as pulsatile or uh, controlled release of drugs. This is the concept, you see you have to think, you have to make a program that way, right. Adsorption, desorption of proteins is another application. Huh? Proteins like <coughs> human gamma globulin, human serum albumin, myoglobin, alpha lactalbumin, you see at different temperatures. Uh, proteins adsorbed per uh, 10 to the minus 3 per gram of particles actually, 10 to the minus 3 gram per gram of particles. Uh, this is not 9 per, this is G actually. Subrata made it. Uh, this is to the minus 3 gram per gram of particles okay. and these are the two different temperatures at which they get absorbed onto the uh, surface of the gel modified with such polymer. It is not very difficult to understand all right. Adsorption, desorption proteins and I like to tell you some general aspects these are advantages of synthetic polymers in conjugates. You see polymer biomolecular conjugates, polymer biomolecular conjugates, natural polymers biomolecular conjugates, synthetic polymers biomolecular conjugates, advantage, ad, advantages of such conjugates, advantages of such synthetic polymers, disadvantages of such synthetic polymers etcetera. So, you try to understand here different polymer composition structures, molecular weights which are possible uh, in case of synthetic polymers which is not so easy in case of non, your natural polymers because in natural polymers the diversity that diversity is not possible because a system produces such natural polymers. So, their molecular weight molecular distribution remain a uh, narrow zone and they have when such uh, synthetic polymers are used for conjugations or bound to biomolecules, then that is also suitable for synthetic. But that means, that it shows some advantages of using synthetic polymers use of uh, natural polymers. I tell you one example, stimuli responsive system say touch me not plant is there, you have seen touch me not plant, touch me not lajjavati, if you touch it lajjavati, if you touch it, okay, his lips are closed, uh, after some time it again opens. <coughs> there are certain plants as their defense mechanism, um, they have some thorns or these leaves, you see this lajjavati you have to uh, protect themselves from this your, your what is it called cattles, otherwise the cattles will eat them, say 
by uh, some starch or some your wind flow etc they close their leaves these cattle will uh, imagine that there is nothing available this way this is their protection mechanism defense mechanism so there is some tissues you see there is some tissues which actually um, uh, show such changes this is smart tissue then again um, uh, seismonastic plant photonastic plant our famous scientist who can name Jagadish Chandra Bose he worked a lot on these plants so they have this smart tissues smart polymers there that means I want to say that these polymer this natural uh, your these plants contain some natural polymers if you can isolate them without denaturization then those can be used for such stimuli responsive purpose I tried little bit now there are certain plant if you just make a sound huh, this uh, their leaves will dance hmm, like this So, um, that plant is there in my house, I have just somehow collected it is there. Reactive polymer range of pendant groups in polymer conjugated to biomolecules and number of pendant groups may be controlled and so many things are there if you read you will understand I tell you this there so versatility is possible in synthetic polymers whereas this is a little bit restricted in natural polymers. And you have seen in case of the stimuli responsive polymer this there is one site uh, on one uh, end, end of the polymer molecule through carboxyl or hydroxyl or amino group it can be attached. Uh, now, if you want to attach a biomolecule you can do it in one place one site or in multiple sites. Now, in case of natural polymer there is some limitation whereas, in case of synthetic polymers you can have many more sites which you can tailor that means, you can create some active sites many more sites frequently you can attach keep sites where we can attach these biomolecules. So, those things are uh, de des uh, described over here. Alternating polymer, alternating copolymers frequency of pendant groups may be controlled. You know what is pendant group? What is pendant group? Could you tell me an example of one pendant group, a polymer containing a pendant group? Hmm? Polystyrene. Phenyl group is the pendant group, polypropylene, methyl group is the pendant group, okay, like this. So, that pendant group uh, location as well as their frequency, those can be controlled through some copolymerization. You have to design the molecule, then you can synthesize. Then, some spacer can be used, spacer may be biodegradable, allowing controlled release of conjugates. Say, you have attached a conjugate, suppose this is a polymer molecule. So, you have uh, you have attached a uh, sorry. So, this suppose this is a conjugate biomolecular conjugate active biomolecular conjugate attached uh, to this polymer. So, if you want to release this thing up from this conjugate say say after separation you have uh, you have said uh, done it uh, separated through such conjugation and after separation you have to again release uh, revive it recover it, how to do? Then you have to break off your head. Now, if that uh, site does not break then your purpose is lost. So, if this site contains a biodegradable group like say I tell you this way, this group is there which is hydrolytically degradable. So, here one carbo your ester group, uh, here at, the, at this site again another ester group. Okay. So, by hydrolytic degradation, hydrolytic degradation this portion can be recovered. So, this is called a spacer, these are called spacer here. Spacer may be biodegradable allowing controlled release of conjugates. The spacer groups between pendant group and the biomolecule that is also possible. Some limitations, 
the polymer must be non-toxic, non-immunogenic, should be on the GRAS list of FDA. What is GRAS? Generally regarded as safe, generally, generally regarded as safe, that list is called GRAS list of food and drug administration authority, food and drug administration authority, FDA. So, if your polymer is listed in that grass list, yes, you can use safely. Okay. So, this way something are described over here. General advantages of synthetic polymer biomolecular conjugates, please read it, you will understand. Some limitations of synthetic polymer biomolecular conjugates continued, uh, which can help in sterilization, sterilization natural materials are not that way sterilizable, whereas synthetic materials can be sterilizable without degradation. Requirements of biomedical polymers for living system, these minimum standards include the following criteria, the materials must not leach soluble components to the living system unless this release is, actually it should be is, release is intentional, a controlled release drug delivery system for living system, the material must be biocompatible, it must not degrade, etcetera. Some applications uh, I will cover later. Polymers have been introduced to for solid surfaces and biomolecules as stimulus response to switching sequences. Current research says attempt to modify tissues and cells and control interaction uh, with living systems with the help of stimuli responsive polymers, which might open new applications in a wide spectrum of fields from clinical medicine to industry. That is all. Thank you.